So once I've gone to WordPress.com, it's going to prompt me to choose what I want my home page to look like. It's also going to give me lots of different options for free themes to choose from. It's important to remember that you can change that later on. Uh, first and foremost, you need to find a domain. That's a title for your blog. So I've typed that in. It shows me my free option. Of course, we're all just going with the free option. Um, and here we go. So the template is set up with the theme that I've asked for. And now you can go in and customize. WordPress blog will need a little information from you, but not too much. So you'll notice that I'm not actually giving them my full last name. And for my public display name, I'm not using my full name either. That's what the recommendation is for you. Um, I'm giving them just a very short description, but of course it's important for you for privacy concerns not to include uh, obviously any of your contact information, address, or anything that's going to give um, access to too much information that people don't necessarily need access to. WordPress wants to give you the option to customize your site as much as you like. So here I'm adding the site title. I'll offer a tagline as well. And then we're going to get to the important bit where for you and your group blogs, you're going to be able to invite people um, to join you in your blogging endeavor. So again, anytime you customize something you do want to save. Over on the left, I go over to People, Save Settings. Great, so I go over to Add People, and it's going to show you the different options for when you're inviting somebody to be a contributor to your blog, you have a number of different options. So let's look at the differences, um, and then we'll talk about the recommendation um, that you will want to use for your own group blog. So you can see the different things that different roles are able to do. Editors can view, edit, publish, delete posts, pages, moderate comments, manage categories, tags, and links. Um, the administrator has full and complete ownership over the blog. They can do absolutely anything. Contributors have a little bit less power and so on. So in this example right now, you can see I'm inviting your teacher to join me as a co-admin of this blog. That means that I trust that any changes she makes um, are going to be the right changes for us. So I can customize my message and then send the invitation and she'll receive it and then before she actually becomes an administrator of the shared blog space she has to accept that invitation. So I'm going to quickly go through the basics of setting up your first post. Um, it's important that you choose titles that will actually invite readers to want to see what it is that you have to say. And a few different options. I think this is actually going to be our best option. And then once you've got a great title, of course, the title is meaningless unless you have content that engages your audience as well. You'll notice that you have a media library with a few images, but you're also welcome to go ahead, take your own images, and drag those in. Whenever I'm starting a post, I make sure that I customize the font, make it nice and big, in order to grab the attention of my reader. So you can see where I need to go in order to get those additional options. And maybe I'll have a pull quote at the start as well. Again, the more that you format, the more that you personalize the post, it's a little bit of a respect thing for your reader. So let's look at how we can also bring in a YouTube video. So now that I've found the YouTube video that I want to embed, I go ahead and I open that up. And I am going to go over to Share, which is then going to give me the HTML, when I click embed, that gives me the HTML so that I can go ahead and actually embed the video into my post. I can do a little bit more than just hyperlink. So you see that um, I've, instead of just going to the normal view option, what I've selected, and then all I have to do is paste that in and it appears and people can enjoy um, this remix of pen, pineapple, apple pen. Voila. Just to give you a better look at that, I'm going back and forth between visual or text. So text is there for any time that I want to drop in any HTML code, and I can always go back and forth to see how the code looks. 
Because you're on Twitter, you also might want to embed the occasional tweet. So those three little dots give you the option to grab the HTML code that you would again just copy and paste over to your blog, and that's going to embed it into the post, um, and that will appear really nice and neat. So again, if you've come across a Jeepers tweet that you want to include in your blog, you have that option to do that as well. Remember, a benefit of the blog is that you can provide loads of hyperlinks over to resources that you're using. So a blog post really isn't a blog post unless you're giving your reader access to additional resources. Um, again, extending them, showing them where your thinking comes from is a real benefit of using the blog format. Photos for Class is a great site to go to to find uh, properly attributed images. So all you need to do is search the image that you're looking for. When you download that image, um, what's going to happen is that file is always is is just going to already have the, the proper attribution attached to it. So you don't need to worry about doing any of the citation. Photos for Class is going to do all the work for you. So in terms of making your blog more visual, more engaging for the reader, that's another excellent resource um, that I'd recommend you look into. So once I've downloaded that file, all I need to do is add it and insert it into my post where I'd like to have that image present. And you'll see at the bottom, it has the attribution right there on it. So that's a great tool, Photos for Class. Last but not least, just a reminder that WordPress lets you customize any of their themes. So once you really want to make that space your own, um, if you go back into theme, customize, you can select the color, you can select the header image, um, you can really make sure that the space reflects you, the designer, um, or if you get bored with the way that it looks and you want to kind of rebrand or repackage your site, uh, you can have a play and, and go through and, and look at the added features there.